Good morning everyone, it's Gabby Mugga here. I thought I would do a gaming commentary style video because I actually kind of like those. And the topic is uh, all over the place. We're just going to talk about John Deradev and it's game. It's going to be a fun one. I just wanted to start off with saying that I used to be a fan of Yonder Simulator, but we all know he let us down, and it's been six years he's been making this game. He has no excuse on the matter. As we all know, Yonder Simulator has been quite popular around 2015 through many popular gaming YouTubers playing the game all around. Though, not many of them kept playing, nor I was actually a fan of PewDiePie, though I did watch some of Markiplier and Jacksepticeye. But the one YouTuber I like to shout out that also has been the only one as I know so far that consistently make gender simulator videos was your boy Jay from the Cub Scout. He's a really cool dude and I love his content. Although curiously on the matter, he really is indifferent in talking about the game and his state. Uh, I guess he just still likes the game, but he doesn't want to get into all of that. Just a little bit curious, N nothing against the guy. I just very curious to know what he really thinks about all of this, because he has far said nothing, and out of all the gaming YouTubers, I see him as the one with the most, um, how do I say this? The most closure with this game in particular. For the longest time, I didn't really know about John Deere Dev. I mostly watched Jay's content on John Deere Simulator for a really long time. It was very fun. And he still makes videos. The last one was only about a month ago. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, so yeah, I didn't really know about John Deere Dev or how he was or uh, all that stuff. And the drama hasn't really started yet when I did watch some of his videos. But the first one that comes into mind that boggles me is his entire video that his game has taken so long because of emails. Now, this didn't immediately raise any red flags, although for most it did. But it was like so weird to bring it all up. I'm like, okay, but can you just hire someone to keep in mind all that? And then I don't know if it even was the same video or not, but he's like, don't suggest that either, it's a stupid idea. I'm like, okay, whatever. But where things really- f I was even young at the time, by the way, but where things really fell apart is his entire video about all the hate and drama that he has been receiving. And to that point, young fans, like I was years ago, uh, and I wasn't actually that young at the time when that video was out, but Technically, I was completely unaware that there even was a drama to begin with. It was just amazing how one video he did backfired so badly that it caused any fan of his to just question him outright now. Though sadly, he still has fans nowadays, but they're most likely just even younger than I am. But seriously, that hate video of all the haters and all that stuff, it was really, really stupid. I was super skeptical into what the heck was going on. Then I looked and it's like, yeah, I didn't care. I still wasn't too knowledgeable about the drama because I tend to not really care about that. It's only that recently I watch drama videos occasionally just because I'm that bored. But... Even without all the drama, I was actually getting very tired on uh, how he handled its development. Instead of just implementing the gosh darn rivals already, it's been so long since he mentioned about adding Osana into the game, and he just straight up keeps delaying it until he decided to not give a date anymore. It, it was really annoying to the point that it was even noticeable. For Jay's content, as even he mentioned, there's not much videos to do on about since updates aren't frequently, and he doesn't really add anything. Even ja even Jay acknowledges uh, the issue with this. Now let's talk about Osana and the rivals very quick. His excuse to not adding Osana into the game, because he wants his game to be polished, perfect, 
and not having any bugs before he can add a sauna. And I'm like, okay, reasonable. And when is that? He claims that he wants to add Osana where the game is in a good enough state to be a demo, and I'm like, okay. I'm bo I'm mind boggled afterwards finding out about his Patreon, cause he wanted to start it. He wanted to make it a Kickstarter for when he does the demo for the game or something, just to add Osana and all that things. And I'm like, wait, okay. But then he decided ultimately to team up with Tiny Build, and we all know what that happened. If you don't know, basically, he had one programmer, and that programmer that Tiny Build gave him was like, Oh god, let's fix this entire mess. He didn't like that he changed all the code, because he probably can't read it, and he fired the guy. Although, I doubt he fired the guy. I bet they had a such a toxicating argument that he just left. I'm, I'm convinced that the programmer left and wasn't actually fired. But, as for the rivals, most of them are very questionable decisions. And I hate some of them to really just think about why he even put them in the game. For the most part, if we take a look at all the rivals, seems to be very typical, just generic anime waifus, which is like, fine. But, some of these are super questionable. More so specifically, the little sister. Which, thank god, it has nothing to do with her having romantic feelings for her brother. Though not that I even hate incest shit in, like, anime, it's just like, whatever. I'm very indifferent about it. But, it's st it, that's not even the worst part. I think the worst part is-it's the teacher herself. Like, why? Now, a creator of any media has all the right to say what age a character is and whatever. He states that they're all 18 in the beginning of the game, otherwise specified. Which, sure, fine, but I can't be bothered by the fact that if all the seniors, like Senpai, are 18, and to me that's very believable. But Yanshan is a year below Senpai. Then doesn't that make her 17? Speaking of ages between all these characters, it's still a high school setting. It makes it worse that the Japanese uniforms they are using are for middle schoolers and not high schoolers. And that 18 plus matches is gonna be so invalid once the little sister comes into the equation cause she can't tell me that she's also 18. I don't wanna bring up the leap of logic because it's mostly common sense, but if they ain't twins, they can only be about 10 months apart. That is still most likely an age apart. I don't want to claim about Yan- uh, fuck his name. I don't want to claim Alex of being a pedo, cause to me, I hate that being thrown around like just like that. It's just people's sad excuse to want to immediately cancel someone. Though at least in this particular case, there is valid reason to assume so, but we can't confirm nor deny that he is or isn't a pedo. I am indifferent about that, I'm not gonna say that he is or he isn't, but something can be very clear, and that is that he is a major fucking creep. Let's not forget that he collaborated with an, an adventure mobile kind of hentai game to put characters of his into the game. Remember when I said John Chan's presumably 17 with all the shit has been laid out? Well, the two characters that are in there is Yan Shan and Info Shan. And Infoshan has been said to be the exact same age as, uh, you know, Yanshan. So, basically, you have minors in a hentai game. Wow, that's, that's just insane, isn't it? And it's just a bunch of things that just makes him apparent a, to be a such a disgusting creep. Because not just they have uniforms for younger people in the game, they have Presumably mostly underage girls that you can take fucking panty shots and then 
he promoted a body pillow for the goth rival, which for sure has to be 17 or less. Cause... Still, a body pillow? Dude, these things are expected to be made by the fans for the fans, cause that's just like, fine, whatever. But you to officially merch body pillows of your presumably underage characters? It's such, it's such, a, such a disgusting thing to do. And this is not taken into consideration that most of your audience are fucking children. What makes this all worse, it's not even the minors, but the ones that are older in between the rivals, which are the nurse and the teacher. Now, obviously, it's illegal for any student and anyone who just works in the school to have a relationship. Legal or not of age, it's still illegal on that factor, because it's the senior's responsibility to basically take care of these minors. And it's just wrong. But even if we take age into consideration, it doesn't... It's, it's so wrong, because have you read the teacher's description? Mira is a substitute teacher who absolutely loves her job. There is nothing that she enjoys more than having a dozens of eyes all directly towards her, especially if those eyes belong to teenage boys. Met Meta will appear at schools in the seventh week of the gameplay in order to fill for Kaho. Kaho, I'm butchering that. Whatever. She will quickly begin hunting for new prey, and Senpai will catch her attention. Her hobby is seducing schoolboys, and as so far, no man has ever been able to resist her charms. If she decides that she wants someone, they have no hope of escape. Senpai won't be able to escape her clutches unless someone takes drastic measures. You're putting a predator in your game what the actual fuck is this this is this right here that people are so convinced that he just is a pedophile still i won't confirm nor deny i won't say that but it's just very apparent and it's clear that he's just a fucking sick creep this this should not be allowed in your game like no. Other questionable things that he has done, and I'm pretty sure 100% he just did this for attention. Th he added Corona Chen into the game. Like, what the fuck? During this pandemic, and you're just gonna add such a convoluted character. It's, it's so stupid. I know there's also Ebola-chan, and that's also something that just shouldn't exist. Personally, I wouldn't care about these things being characters, cause people will fetishize anything, really, including a virus in this case. But... With Ebola-chan, I don't know. Eh, it's just there. But Corona is different. It's currently... Something that caused a pandemic. It's we are all in lock. We were all in lockdown uh, Now we're not in total lockdown anymore, but still you're putting in something that's causing millions of lives now and it, It's just insane Why would he add that into the game? Again the idea of both Ebola-chan and Corona-chan I could care less, cause people will make anything. And to that, whatever. About Corona Chan being racist because of the traditional Chinese clothing, I guess I can agree. Like they should have gave her different clothing, cause Ebola Chan wasn't as bad as it's just a nurse outfit. But like it's it's just okay, whatever. But during a pandemic, and to put it. In your game it's a bit inhumane than making the character itself like why promote that act like a professional please and I'm pretty sure 
he's not this fucking stupid. In a case like he thought it was a good idea and he won't get backlash. I'm I'm convinced he wanted backlash. He wanted some recognition so people will talk about him. I'm I'm pretty sure that's just what he is now. Dude, I take in readers every couple of minutes because I just can't. I'm not used to do prolonged commentating. If you watch my king play, I would be stuttering much. But I'm not uh recording all of my stuttering like now. But this is just simply a scam because the game's never gonna finish. He's taking his sweet ass time with this. So what what are we expecting from this person? Oh. Oh about the most recent shit? Wait. Oh yeah. Lovesick is a thing, right? The, the new game? Well, yeah. Well, this is a bit of old news, but this is the most recent thing, of course. Well, someone took his sweet-ass time to basically recreate the entire game, and better, in two weeks! Two weeks! That is amazing. Honestly, no it's not. It's expected. Now, he brings up the biggest excuse that he stole assets no, he didn't. These are all from the Unity store. And I'm aware that other assets were stealing just directly from other games, making it look so not belonging. And the other thing is, he also claims that, yeah, it didn't took enough time, because he didn't build it like scratch, from, from scratch like I did. And then, it's, it's just so petty. First of all, that doesn't matter. All you really did is put a bunch of characters in a school setting, and you just have Ayandere eliminating rivals. This is such a simple idea, anyone could have come up with it. Like, the idea itself. These are just ideas. This isn't a game. And heck, you don't own any of this. All you own is probably just the name Yandere Simulator. But that's it. You don't own anything within the game. All the assets aren't yours. And... It's... You be, you truly believe that this wouldn't happen at this point? Someone was gonna take initiative. Because I remember there was a video that you said it yourself. You could have left the game as a hobby or have it be someone else's problem. You had this idea yourself. The name Lovesick was also an idea of yours because you think Yandere Simulator sounded too much of a joke game. Which it does. Look at all the other games with Simulator in it. And, well, another guy took initiative of taking the name Lovesick, actually improving upon the game, and he did so much more than you in fucking two weeks, and you took three years to make this pre-alpha beta cuck that you have made of a mess. I'm not gonna judge whether one has mental health or not. If Yandere Dev does have mental health, still, I don't think I'll feel any any sorts of sorry and pity for him. He doesn't deserve the pity, but I'm not gonna say that he just straight up isn't, cause nobody can say anything about someone's mental health. But Threatening to suicide most likely is the biggest red flag to just know that you're just not having a mental breakdown of any kind. But still, no one can say anything about it. It's still very wrong to try to guilt trip someone with such a stupid claim. Because you're that jealous of someone just recreating presumably not even a game. You just can't take it well. You can't really take any criticism. Your coding is shit. Your ideas are all over the place. You don't have a consistent schedule. You don't know what proper updates are. All you do is bug fixes because of course you have a bunch of bugs. And stop. Stop adding pointless easter eggs to your game. This was my initial problem with Yandere Simulator before I even knew a lot of drama. This guy just seems already so unfocused. 
Can he just please Adosana? Can he just please do something with his game already? Stop adding stupid easter eggs. Just finish the game and add Osana. Please stop it. Aside of threatening to kill himself, it's also bad enough his entire Discord. I personally would love to do the speedrun, but uh, no. I mean, I have this amazing meme. I love it. I see a couple of screenshots on how terrible he is towards his people on the Discord server. He, he just can't take any criticism. A person legit ask why isn't there any female delinquents anymore? It's like, that's just a very genuine question. I just, like, anyone would have loved to hear someone's thought of, like, uh, I don't know, uh, taking them out of the game. It's, it's a decent question. But nope, he's like, oh, definitely a troll and starts spiting at the person. What? I feel sorry for anyone that is still supporting this game, and I'm surprised that he still have like a lot of donations. Like he's living off of that Patreon money, and that's not even take into account what he has earned from YouTube and Twitch for that matter. That's another red flag. For a game developer, you would assume he doesn't, you know, stream that often. No, but he does. Speaking of stream, we all know that he told someone to kill himself. Now... I'm all for edgy jokes, and sometimes when you a friend a friend, you jokingly can say kill yourself as a joke spite. Because when you're in the levels of being friends, you can literally say anything offensive and it's not offensive. Although that depends on what kind of people you are. But for the most part, I'm fine with that. I have friends that are not that type of people, but they don't see it very bothering with me doing it with my other peeps. It's like, but these aren't friends. These are people who are looking up to you. These are, these are just random strangers, acquaintances or so. And you just straight up tell them with an angry voice to kill yourself on stream. Okay. What the fuck, man? Can you just have them some level of decency, please? Just, why? Anyway, it's just very apparent that it's just done. I hope Lovesick does get done and finished, and let's see what that becomes. Who knows, maybe he would change some of the rivals, because I think of all of them, the teacher really just does have to go. The nurse is like, whatever, but the teacher? What? Why? It's, why put a predator in your game? That's so fucked up. But, obviously, I couldn't know many of this because I was completely unaware and I'm not too much bothering with drama and all that shit. But, I would like to thank a couple of YouTubers, uh, just great ones. Because the thing is, there's a lot of videos out there that repeats too much. But there's also a lot of videos that just has very dumb claims. Again, with calling him a pedophile, like, sure, he's a creep. but. Don't straight up just blatantly said that. And there's a lot of people that don't add much to the conversation. Or to what's happening on hand. I like to think some of the most recent ones that did a pretty good job on the topic matter. Especially someone who only talked about him once. That's pretty good. I don't want to say names because there's a bunch of them. I will link a lot of videos that I really recommend you guys watching. They are very cool YouTubers. I don't feel like they have this kind of, how they say is, Keemstar levels of just toxicity or something. I wouldn't say toxicity, it's just a very dislikable person. But yeah, with that, that being said, there's nothing much for me to talk about. Yonder Simulator was a train wreck. It was, n it was never gonna finish. Yeah. So you guys want to enjoy the gameplay in the background? Because by all means, I kind of want to leave that playing. So, this is not something I will do very often. Uh, 
I, w I like to experiment with this commentary style because I like commentary videos, but mm, it's not my thing to like make a s like I don't make a script. I just had bullet points. I'll mainly just be a gaming YouTuber, and then maybe when I'm able to draw art digitally, I could do like speed paintings and such. I really want to do that. This little art that you see here in the corner. That's been made years ago as a birthday gift from an amazing friend. I'll link her DeviantArt like I already did before, but still, she's an amazing friend and she's a great artist. Love her stuff. Love her as a person too. Uh, I don't know. Duel Links content, Arena Valor. <sighs> Maybe I could continue this Boktai series, but I think I'd rather continue it in New Game Plus. Also, Battle Network. I really want to do some Battle Network. Anyway, uh, that being said, there's nothing else for me to say. With that, I hope you guys enjoy. I really hope. And I hate, I hate saying this, but like, subscribe, and comment. That's all good for the YouTube algorithm, and I just, uh, kind of want to see this channel grow, please. Thank you all for staying this far with my irritating high-pitched voice for an adult. And, well, until next time, I'll say fairly well.